there is a tendency in, uh, in the underdeveloped countries to think that uh, there is a shortcut to development, that countries can be developed for us by someone else. I'm saying this is not, this is not possible, it has never happened. Denmark developed itself. It was not developed by someone else. Sweden developed itself. Not someone else went and developed Sweden for the Swedes. Uh, Norway developed itself. This is the, the United States developed itself. Britain had an empire, and an empire helped Britain in development, but we have no intention of establishing an empire anywhere. So, what we are trying to say is the, the basis of development is our own effort. It's raining somewhere in the highlands of Tanzania. Many million tons of water are carried away by the swift and narrow rivers. The valleys high in the mountains are lush and green. But on the plains which make up the largest part of Tanzania's territory, rain is scarce and unpredictable. And all too often the crops fail because the rains come too late and irrigation facilities are lacking. In many of these arid areas, the government handed out free corn to the hungry people for several years. But the result of this famine relief was that many farmers stopped working on their land for it was so often fruitless. And with government help, they were able to get corn with little or no effort. But Tanzania could not go on asking for corn from abroad. The leaders decided that the farmers would only get corn for planting if the rain was long overdue and if they had begun to cultivate some land. What we are trying to get out of the minds of ourselves, out of our own minds and the minds of our people is the idea that if we pick an uncle in the world and pick the uncle well, then we don't have to work. Well done, President. Tanzania is mainly an agricultural country, so development has to be most rapid in this area. A large-scale government campaign has led to an increase in cotton production of 18% per year since 1961. The area under cultivation has almost doubled, often through community cooperation. Examples of this spirit of working together are block farms, large fields tended by the local farmers who shared the income according to how many hours each one worked in the field. Unfortunately, at the same time, world cotton prices dropped so much that the farmer's income remained virtually the same. Another of Tanzania's large exports, sisal, has been hit even harder. In 1965-66, the loss in export earnings resulting from the fall in sisal prices on the world market was greater than the entire amount of foreign aid Tanzania received that year. Sisal, like cotton, was introduced by the colonial powers. For many years, the tough fibers of this cactus were the best material available for making rope and twine. But now, artificial fibers with lower prices and better quality are taking over the market. Here, south of Lake Victoria, is the main cotton growing area. Two other well-developed areas, the Southern Highlands and the Kilimanjaro District, on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro, good quality coffee has been grown for many years. The local population has attained a relatively high standard of living through growing coffee on their small plots, together with one of their staple foods, bananas.
To compete in a difficult world market, these coffee growers many years ago successfully formed cooperative societies for processing their crop. In the southern highlands, tea has long been grown with good results. East African tea is in great demand, and local cooperative plantations like this one have proved profitable enterprises. Lumber forms the basis for one of Tanzania's newer industries. A program of reforestation has begun in highland areas where the climate is temperate. Another aim of the government is to induce small farmers to change from a subsistence economy to the growing of cash crops. In the southern highlands, pyrethrum, which is used to make insecticides, is a good cash crop for the small farmer. All over the country, a continuing campaign is being waged to teach farmers better methods of cultivation and to introduce new crops which may provide a better diet for their families. The success of all these efforts depends largely on education. The number of children in elementary schools has increased 50% since independence in 1961. One of the reasons for this expansion is that people all over the country build small schools like this one on their own initiative. But out of the more than 700,000 children in grade school, only about 20,000 will be able to go on to high school because there are not enough schools or teachers. President Nerere has recently called for more emphasis on farm-related subjects in the lower grades, pointing out that only in this way will education further all the goals of Tanzania. At the same time, an intensive program for adult education has been going on for some years all over the country. Here, villagers from northern Tanzania participate in a course on how to set up local cooperatives. These adult education courses cover many subjects, from the three R's to bookkeeping and modern agricultural techniques. Tanzania is further reducing its dependence on foreign imports by producing cigarettes from tobacco grown in the southern highlands. Tobacco was introduced by European farmers, but some of the largest plantations today are managed by Africans. This tobacco farm represents another government experiment to introduce improved methods of cultivation to farmers. <laughs> In village settlements, the people work together to produce one or more cash crops. The government helps them by providing expert advice and necessary equipment like these drying sheds. <laughs> Sleeping sickness, a disease caused by the tsetse fly, has always been a problem in Tanzania. All cattle have to be sprayed or dipped regularly to protect them from this disease. As a result of these preventive measures, the cattle industry is expanding. Here, government officials inspect a cattle spray installed at one of several experimental ranches.
There has long been enough cattle to supply a large meat processing plant. Tanganyika Packers was founded in 1949. We first went into production in 1950. Government has a 51% interest and Liebig's Extract of Meat Company, 49. We've had over the past 17 years a very successful partnership with government. In fact, we have found that uh, the government interest has been very helpful in our operations. Uh, without it, we would have probably had quite a, a more difficult struggle to, in the uh, industry, of, of the, in the cattle industry. We are controlled by government. They are represented on the board of directors. As far as we are concerned, it's, it's an immense advantage to have government. It would, I think, have been foolish to have started an industry like this, which involves the livestock of Tanzania, without government participation. And certainly, as far as we are concerned, it has worked out well and is, and is continuing to work very well. Uh, the government interest is now represented by NDC, who um, are taking more interest, perhaps, than when it was in the hands of the Treasury in the previous days. But the NDC uh, recognize our problems, commercial problems, and they are usually very helpful. Here in his office, the director explains the aims of the corporation. Uh, good morning. First of all, I would like to welcome you to the National Development Corporation. Uh, the National Development Corporation is a commercial organization which was established by government on the 1st of January 1965. The activities of the National Development Corporation are not restricted to any particular sector in the economy. Uh, we invest in mining, we invest in agriculture, we invest in agricultural proce processing, and we also invest in hotels in order to, to attract uh, tourism. I should perhaps add also that the National Development Corporation is owned by government. But because it is owned by government, this does not mean that uh, there is political interference in this organization. Uh, we are allowed uh, to carry on strictly as a business organization. Uh, to give you an idea of what our activities are, at the moment, uh, we have participated in not less than 50 companies. Uh, some of them in these companies we have 50 percent of the shares but in some of them we are only in the minority and um, uh, the total investment in all these 50 companies is of the order of 10 million pounds sterling so really we are quite uh, a big organization and I believe that we continue to grow uh, as the demand of our economy uh, requires NDC also invests in its own enterprises. In the capital, it has opened a number of small workshops where local artisans can get tools and raw materials at a low price, and where a sales organization distributes their products. Here, old tin cans and scrap iron are used to make all kinds of household utensils thus saving money that would otherwise be used for imports and providing goods the people need at a price they can afford. Actual industrial development is slow, too slow. Most of the expected foreign aid has not materialized. Nevertheless, this large cotton mill under construction since 1967 is being built with aid from communist China. This project employs several thousand people. Even so, unemployment remains a problem. The army of unemployed in the cities is growing. To combat this problem, the small amount of capital available in the country must be used for the benefit of the people living there. That is why in February 1967, the government nationalized all the banks, insurance companies, and some key industries. Most of the European personnel from these banks and many private European and Indian businessmen left at this time 
despite government assurance that nationalization would be limited to a few key sectors of the economy. to a foreign investor, come in, invest in this, we have no interest. You can go ahead and you can own this 100%. In this, we shall go in partnership with you at least 50% or 60%. This is what we shall say. Now, if 20 years from now, uh, government says, we will nationalize. This is, this is possible. I, 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 it's really absurd for me to say this is not possible. All we can say is, we will then pay full and fair compensation. Naturally, uh, measures like this one do affect business. And there has been a tendency, for example, for business to slow down. But I believe that this is a natural phenomena, particularly when you deal with businessmen, when you deal with investors. Uh, all these people are always, um, uh, as we call them in English, shy birds. Uh, they suspect any movement which upsets any economy. And we have upset the economy. Because the previous organizations, for example, the banks, we are owned by uh, British investors. Now we have nationalized them. This means that we have set up a new organization altogether. Therefore, people who've been using the, uh, the bank facilities have tended to shy back to see, to watch and see whether the facilities are going to continue or not. At Arusha, when President Nerere announced the bank takeover, he called strongly and directly for a supreme effort by the people of Tanzania to be self-reliant. He urged them not to forget the spirit of cooperation which was their heritage. The development of the nation depended on them alone. At meetings all over the country, this message was repeated again and again by government officials and by Nerera himself. kabla ya kwanza tano nilikuja Dodoma hapo mwaka huo wengine mnakumbuka wengine hamkumbuki kulikuwa na njaa kubwa hapa nikapita barabara moja nimo katika Land Rover nikapita barabara tunakuja hivi mara nikaona jambo mpaka sasa akili yangu halijatoka katika akili yangu Unakuja katika barabara unakuja katika barabara, barabara hivyo kupita hivi bwana moja akaanguka mara kamu akatoka kafla kuingia barabarani na huku lore inapita hata motokari yetu lore inapita pale yeye aka akaanguka pale chini Vup. lore kidogo imponde yule mtu nini ameona punje ameona punje za mchele barabarani mnacheka haya si mambo ya kucheka kaona punje za mchele barabarani anaziangukia anaziokota anakula pale 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 hajali hajali ile lore inapita hajali hata kidogo anaokota zile punje za mchele zimeanguka barabarani mwaka mtinatatu na wamekufa wamekufa sana watu hapa mwaka ule kwa njaa mwaka 1960 mara tano iliposhinda uchaguzi wa mwaka ule halafu mimi nikaombwa na gavana wakati ule kuunda serikali nikawa waziri mkuu wa kwanza baadhi ya kazi zangu za kwanza kufanya moja ilikuwa ni kuomba mahindi nikapata mahindi yakatoka Amerika yakaja 
Alhamdulillah na washukuru rafiki zangu wa Amerikani. Kama mnaomba kama mnaomba omba tunakuwa sawa sawa na yule ndugu yangu nilimwona mwaka 53 yule anaanguka vup kuwa kota kota zile punje barabarani kwa sababu hakuna kitu kikubwa eh, kama tumbo tutaabudu watu wengine tutatia amri za watu wengine tutawajali watu wengine watatuongoza kama unaviongoza barabara unaongoza motokari kwa sababu wao wana chakula na sikaka Tanzania is a country whose main resource is her people. The government's development efforts have focused on this fact. In all sectors of the economy, key to progress. Capital and technological skill may be scarce, but enthusiasm, a spirit of cooperation, and an awareness of the real meaning of independence are everywhere present. <laughs>